Programmable Logic Controller, well known as PLC, is an electronic control device that converts the complex sequence control system in a program to help users to control easily. In the past, users had to use the complex sequence control system using switches and relays, like the control panel picture on the left. The hardwired nature in the past made it difficult for engineers to alter the process. They can now use PLCs to easily design and modify the sequence circuit with simple programming. PLC is applicable in all sites that intend to implement automation from the replacement of the control panel that uses relay, timer, and counter to the intelligent small-scale cutting machine and the large system. It is mostly applicable in process automation and factory automation. It can be applied to many kinds of industries, including packing, water treatment, car manufacturing, and semiconductor manufacturing. LS Electric has products named XGT, XGT PLC, XGT Panel for HMI, XGT Servo, XGT InfoU for SCADA. XGT PLC has four types based on the usage. XGK, XGI, XGR are modular types. A module type PLC has each configuration element as a module of the specific size. Customers can combine different modules based on their needs. A module type PLC has the power, CPU, communication, digital input, digital output, and special units separated into individual modules. A block type PLC, XGP, includes the communication module and digital input and output so that it can be used as a complete standalone system. Although it is relatively effective, it has fewer input output points and CPU operational capability. The module type PLC consists of XGK, XGI, and XGR. XGT stands for Next Generation Technology, and KIR is distinguished by the program language. Before XGT series, there were Master K and Glofa series in LS Electric. XGK is an upgraded version of Master K using the same MK language. XGI is an upgraded version of Glofa. Glofa is a PLC that conforms to the IEC standard. IEC language uses function block and symbolic variables. The master K and IEC languages are not compatible with each other. XGR is redundancy PLC. XGK CPU has types of economic E, standard S, advanced A, high performance H, ultimate U, and three network types of SN, HN, and UN, which have built-in Ethernet. This is a table about XGK CPU performance. The program running in PLC is operated from the first to the last step repeatedly. This process is called scan, which is cyclic operation method. It can also be set to run at fixed interval. However, unlike scan, users can also set programs to run periodically using task. Task is an operation that runs prior to scan program while stopping scan temporarily. This task program stops the operation of scan program and then processes the related function in prior to process the internal or external signal occurred periodically and non-periodically. The programming language includes LD, ladder diagram, IL, instruction list, SFC, sequential function chart, and ST, structured text. Usually, ladder diagram is used for XGK, while SFC and ST are used in XGI. 
to use SFC or ST language in XGK, XGK automatic allocation type should be chosen when making a project. Processing speed. Processing speed, input output point, memory capacity are the main points to distinguish CPU types. Memory capacity means programming memory or device memory. XGK CPUE and CPUS has 0.084 nanoseconds per step of speed. One step means one bit or one point. Move instruction occupies three steps, so it takes three times of basic processing speed. When you complete all the programs, you can see the number of steps for the entire program. CPU performance should be considered depending on the number of steps. The higher the performance, the faster the scan time is supported. Real number operation takes a long time. When making a program, it takes longer if there are lots of real number operations. These are the memory data areas for XGK CPUs on the left-hand side. P device is digital input and output memory. P device is an image area to save the state of input output device. After reading the input module state, it is saved in the corresponding P area and sent P area data to output module. M device is internal memory to perform internal operation. K device is also an internal memory. However, it preserves the data during power shutdown. This can be used without setting power shutdown preservation parameter separately. Since M device is not a latch area to preserve the data when PLC's power is off, all data becomes zero, but K device keeps its last value. K device from the address K1000 is used as the built-in PID area. Therefore, users can use from K0 to K999. All types of CPU provide built-in PID function. L area is high-speed link P2P service status contact of the communication module. When the communication module is used, when the variables will be allocated to check the status, such as service counter, error counter, etc., if any communication module nor P2P blocks are used, user can use the L area as internal memory. F area is system flag area. The variables are declared by manufacturer. One of the most commonly used flag is F00093, which is a one second cycle flag. When F93 is turned on, it will be turned on and off every second. Next is timer and counter. Timer instruction is used to count time. I will explain the details in the next chapter using examples. S area is step control area used for sequential control. D area is internal memory just like M area. The only difference between M and D is that M is based on bit and D is based on word. It doesn't mean M cannot be used as word or D as bit. It will be explained in the next chapter. U device is specialized module register area. All specialized modules must use this area because this area is used to save data of these modules and warning information. PLC modules can be categorized as input-output module, communication module, and specialized module. Specialized modules include analog, high-speed counter, position control, temperature control, etc. Next is Z device. Z area is index register to use indirect address. For example, it can be used like D0, Z0. If Z0 value is 5, the entire address means D5. If users change, I will explain the details in the next chapter. 
End device is P2P service address area of the communication module. Finally, our device is file register area. It has 32,768 words from R0 to R32,767 as one block, and each CPU has different number of blocks. This R area is used to keep data without power supply. USB is a commonly used flash memory. We can think of a computer. If you save some data in RAM memory, it will be lost when the computer is turned off. However, a flash memory always backs up its memory data. To save data in flash memory, only our area can access to flash memory using eb-write, eb-read instruction. However, our area can also be used as a normal internal memory. As listed, there are many different kinds of memory that users can use. All memory areas except P can be used as internal memory. Of course, spare P device also can be used as internal memory. The next part is about program configuration. Scan programs can be added up to 256. Usually, users divide scan programs based on its functions instead of configuring all logic in one scan program. The important thing is that the total number of all programs are 256, including task programs. For example, if you use 32 fixed cycle task programs, you can make up to 224 scan programs, which is 256 subtracted by 32. RS-232C D sub communication port is built in in basic type CPU, where RJ45 Ethernet communication port is built in in network type CPU. RS-232C uses 9-pin D-sub cable, and Ethernet port uses RJ45 connector. These CPU built-in communication ports do not work as a master client, but only can work as a slave server. It means CPU can't work as a master to control a low-voltage drive or other devices without communication module. Once again, the built-in communication port is only to connect with controller as a slave server. Both network type and basic type CPU have a USB port to connect to PC. As explained before, processing speed, input-output point, and memory capacity are three main points to consider when selecting a CPU. The maximum input-output points need to be considered when users need to expand modules. If you use a module type PLC, plug in power and CPU on a base, then plug in some other modules you need. A base with CPU is called main base. If the PLC system needs to control more input-outputs, additional base can be added to the main base which is called expansion base. The expansion base can include the input-output, communication, and specialized modules, but not CPU. Bases can mount 4, 6, 8, or 12 modules, except for the power and CPU. Maximum contact point in a slot is 64 points, and if a base can mount up to 12 modules, and maximum number of extension base including a main base is 8. Therefore, high performance CPU type like CPU H, U, HN, UN can have 6144 of maximum input output points. 64 times 12 times 8 equals 6144. Now, Let's take a look at how PLC works. Simply, we can divide the PLC system into input, CPU, and output. If you push a switch, input data comes into input module. On input module, 
we can find P0 bit is turned on as the LED shows. When P0 bit is on, ladder program in CPU checks and turns on all P0 bits. Ladder program with logic is already programmed in CPU, and the ladder program will run with refreshed input contacts. Referring to this example, the first line on ladder program shows that when P0 bit is on, P20 bit turns on. P20 is the first bit on output module. This process is PLC's main job. It refreshes the input and output every scan and continuously repeats. The program written in PLC is operated from the first to the last step repeatedly, and this whole process is called the program scan. First, when PLC becomes run mode, it will initialize the PLC. Initialize will only execute once, when the power is applied or reset is executed. It will reset input-output modules, execute self-diagnosis, clear data, and allocate address for input-output module. Then, refresh input image area by reading the state of input module and saves it in input image area before starting the operation of program. When it executes program from the start to the last step, it checks whether the program or the CPU status contains any error. If it has an error, it does not proceed to the next stage where it refreshes output image. When there is no error found, it refreshes output image to output module. Additionally, if the PLC communicates with other devices, CPU will deliver the communication information to the communication modules. Next step is to end the program. This is the stage to return to the first step after CPU module completes one scan processing. The faster the scan time is the more precise the control is. Therefore, Scan time of CPU is very important. Now, what we just saw is scan program where it repeats continuously. There is a program called task that interrupts the scan program. Initial task runs only once at the first scan when PLC starts to run. Cyclic task will run during the scan program. The cyclic task has a priority over scan program. Therefore, it will stop the scan, and after task, it will return to scan program. For example, there are three programs which has five milliseconds scan time. If there is a fixed interval task of 10 milliseconds, it will proceed fixed interval task every 10 milliseconds and return to scan program. When there are multiple interval tasks, and at certain point when the time overlaps, users can set which one has priority. Next is internal device task. It works on a special condition of internal device, like M device. For example, when M0 turns on from 0 to 1, the task runs at rising edge. It also works the same when it's on a falling edge. This task is not interval, but it proceeds depending on the result of the program. In conclusion, task programs are divided into initial task, fixed interval task, and internal device task.